Good morning, Mr. Quentin oh, Peel. Nice photo. How no, are you, sir? I'm doing good today. It's a nice day. Now, you're a blonde robot person. I am a robot. Tell me what you do here, Blonde Robot. So, Robot, I'm in the pro video department, dealing with a lot of different accounts, but also when it comes to, I guess, a little bit of the brand management, definitely training and getting all the new gear and the new toys out there. Red is part of your portfolio. I, I started to want to talk to you about Red just simply because I loved Red in general. And then. And then Red drops global absolutely and then, and then and then nikon buys red absolutely we've got a lot to talk about a lot to unpack where do we start yeah where do we start <laughs> let's let's talk about well why don't we talk about the new global camera first and yeah, why yeah. that's exciting i mean red was founded way back in 2000 gosh i think it was five and that was when jim janard the guy who basically founded oakley and then sold Oakley and then decided I'm going to get in with some California guys and start our digital cinema company and then change the name of the game to be the first to release 4K raw footage. I mean, it was there's cameras today that can't do 4K 60 and it was doing that back in 2007. So from all the way there to where we are now, they have 8K global shutter, phantom track, extended highlights, 20 stops of dynamic range and then there's that other thing that we talked about. Just that, so, little, yeah. that little elephant in the room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely massive. I went to this awesome event, which mm. you, you ran along yeah. with some partners just a couple of weeks ago, before yeah. any of us knew that there was going to be this seismic shift, not only in the photography industry, but yeah. really like the cinema industry. Red mm. are a massive part of global cinema. Presumably yeah, they, you know, it's not just Hollywood and whatever's going on in New York, but it's all around the world. Mm. Where, where in the hierarchy of Ari and, uh, and all the other players, where do you reckon Red fit in? I mean, Red was, I mean, I don't know if people know, it was one of the first cinema cameras, digital cinema cameras that went to space. Right. I mean, they are currently now making incredible, adva not advancements, but say custom cameras. Yeah. I've never seen Ari or Sony or some of the other models yeah. make custom cameras for DOPs. Um, if you get a chance, check out the Exomorph Red. There, there'll be plenty of links I'm sure you'll have to share. But, I mean, Michael Bay has his own version of Red that Red made for him. I don't know any other camera company that does that. Well, it's interesting you say that because it was David Finchner, I th mm. think someone was saying he also has a really close relationship with Red. And, he, was, and he was one of the first to actually uh, use the Red One, which was their very first camera. And look, what's exciting about Red's DNA, and, and you've already said a whole lot of things which I could talk about. For example, you said Red in space. Well, Nikon has just been announced just a week or two ago that they are going on the Artemis mission to the moon. You know, so they're the only camera company, the stills camera going to the moon. So there's a lot of shared DNA, really. As Jared said on, on an interview I was watching just yesterday. He's the acting, current, standing, killer CEO of Red. He, he, as he said, that kind of Red and Nikon at this point in time are both, the, they're kind of the underdogs in the industry, but they're, they're disruptors. Now, of course, Red is far more of a disruptor, mm. but if you follow the still space, the Z9 and the Z8 have been quite disruptive Huge. stills cameras in the Huge. last little while. Yeah, well, I jumped on Red, Red's site mm -hmm. and I saw the projects and we are talking, you know, the biggest, the highest end Disney stuff. We're talking mm. uh, Mission Impossible. We're mm. talking the biggest, the biggest budget. So clearly, mm. it doesn't matter which studio it is or which director it is. And when you're dealing with the likes of Tom Cruise and or Disney, mm. they only want what's going to work. True. So clearly, Red is there in the action. I think we all do, by the way. I mean, we all want stuff that works, right? Yeah. right? But yeah. is able to, I guess, just... It just comes down to it. It's a tool that you can use to make your story come to life, really. From what I can see, they allowed filmmakers to have more creativity and more options because they were they came in at a better price point. And of course, suddenly people were shooting digital instead of film. You know that that what is what the fifteen is it fifteen years since the first camera, and obviously everything was yeah. film. So just going up, moving away from film is such a massive saving. Oh, if you're talking about the workflow, I think Red's pretty much had their finger on that pulse about, let's say, either working with or speaking with users and finding out uh, what it is that is ne what is needed to make the process better. I mean, for instance, right now, Red has the ability, and again, I think they were the first, to be able to send raw footage directly over the open internet 
to an editor that's completely off-site, remote on the other side of the world. They call it camera to cloud. I mean, I could do that in the smaller, uh, the Komodos, which game changer box size. This is the newer Komodo X, which is a little bit bigger than their first one. And I mean, fractionally bigger. And on this one, I can actually not only control it, via Wi-Fi on my phone, but I can also send the raw footage while I'm shooting to an editor that's on the other side of the world for dailies, for just finishing the project in time. I mean, they still got the finger on the pulse for that. They are the ones who decided on the new Raptor Xs, the, the, the V-Raptor X and also the V-Raptor XLX uh, to do Phantom Track for, it's for virtual production. And even if you have been living in, under a rock, Virtual production has really come up very quickly. And I think especially after it was marketed big during The Mandalorian, which if you haven't seen that, there's, there's links for that, definitely check it out. Super interesting that you have these virtual walls, which are, imagine LED walls that have like LED TVs almost, right? And to, to really make sure that that action that you're building in your environments is able to follow. Well, with Phantom Track, the thing that helps is that you're also able to edit the footage you're shooting without that virtual wall on, but also with it on and doing it on the same camera. So you don't need the, you don't have the need to have two cameras side by side trying to match them up. Red is able to do that. Basically shoot in, we're talking the, the, the smallest delay that's undistinguishable on one card, on one camera, what it looks, the footage you're shooting with the virtual wall and then without. So if you did need to edit without the wall, you can. And it just makes, we're talking VFX guys that my, I hope are listening to, to the channel. They will just give that sigh of relief because we're talking time, money that's saved in doing that. So again, finger on the pulse. These guys are all on it. I think they use the Unreal Engine to mm. run those environments mm. and it's phenomenal because they're using motion control. Mm -hmm. So the camera will move and the environment will move correctly behind Mm -hmm. to match the movement and it's all being done in 3d real time i mean everything will so it'll it'll you'll be able to tell what iris you'll be able to tell what focal length if it happens to be a zoom that will read directly into the environment and it'll make it blend together and i believe i believe dockland studios melbourne mm -hmm. has just installed one of those LED. yeah the net studios is the i believe the largest virtual set in the Southern Hemisphere. That is something that kind of gives Melbourne the tick of approval, I guess. So hopefully we'll be getting some Mark Roberts and some Reds in there, maybe. I mean, hey, we'll see. Uh, you can only some, hope. Some, some Nikon, right? Yeah, or Nikon, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, tell us about the new Global Red. It's big news, Global, 120 frames per second, 8K, 17 stops mm. natively, and then you get more than 20 stops of DR with, uh, I think it's some sort of dual. That is with the extended highlights, yeah. 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 Just all phenomenal. Where does it, where does it, how did it happen? Where does it come from? Nobody knows. I think there was the, the whispers, well, at least the wants. So if nobody's part of it, there is some red user forums that are available on social medias, you know, on Facebooks. I'm definitely a member. I love being part of it because you have users of red, everybody from, you know, the run and gunner to the indie filmmaker to the, to the Hollywood exec that's there just chiming in what they feel, how they, how they're using things. You get to see how they're building their gear too and everything. Now, when the Komodo first came out, all right, when the red Komodo first came out, you got 6K and it was there first global shutter camera, all right? And it was a box camera, again, slightly smaller than this Komodo X. That changed the game for a lot of different people. They called it, because it was this small, they called it the perfect crash cam. You could put it in small areas. You were able to have it in fast moving scenes. This has definitely been in, in, in more than a few, yeah. let's say action car sequences. Anywhere when they're really trying to, I think really just for, again, some CGI, and just VFX blending, global shutter, it just makes everything so easier. There's no, there's no bending of frames if you're using fast whips or even uh, there's no flickering of lights. You know, if you happen to be in a scenario where you're on a location, half the time you don't know what the bulb is in the street light. It could be flickering, not with global. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's things like that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and ever since then, I think uh, what I was saying is and on the how forum. Old, how old is that 6K global? camera and oh the, the first oh wow i think that was just in maybe 2018 i, I could be totally wrong yeah. but it was i mean six years maybe five years yeah yeah but i mean since then it's been used in so many different ways and capacities yeah 
Again, it was small enough to be able to go into these underwater housings up in the plains that we're talking about. Amazing scenarios. Yeah. It was then that on the forums, everybody's like, a little shutter, amazing, thank you, big thumbs up. When can we see it on the next one? You ever thought about it on the next one? How yep. about full frame? Yep. How about, right? Everybody wanted it. Yep. And Red went ahead and changed the game again when they released the V Raptor 8K. We're talking full frame. It's it's Vista Vision, so yep. they call it 8K VV. Vista Vision is a little bit wider than 4K. They released that. You had 120 and it was full frame, but no global. Come on, Red, you let us down. Some people say. But then fail like oh that. yeah yeah you know? right, yeah total fail yeah but then that was making its way through hollywood again and it was amazing and then they dropped the uh, the x and that is incredible 8k at 120. the only feature that i was able to really test in the new x cameras is the extended highlights and it was incredible it appears, and I'm no expert because oh. it's actually hard to find out about sensors, but it appears they've, they've got far superior technology than anybody. And that's including Canon and Arri and Sony because no one else has done it, right? Yep. I mean, there was always, from my understanding, there was always the challenge that I mean, there's a lot of processing that this tiny chip is doing to be able to have the ability to be global. Yep and it would maybe overheat, or maybe it would just be so noisy, you know, the ISO, and just the image would start just really breaking up. Red figured it out. It's unbelievable. So clearly they've got a, their own team of amazing sensor mm. designers and obviously great relationships with some fab. Like mm. I've done a lot of researches of fabs. There's a lot of fabrica fabricators and mm. it might not be anyone we've ever even heard of. Mm. So what I think is phenomenal is that because he was talking about designing the, the chips in the interview I watched last night, you know, just, just oh. the, the controller chips. Okay. And how just designing a controller chip, they're dedicated chips that say might be doing the compression and decompression algorithms. They, it costs $40 million just to make one. And if your camera's got two in it and they're doing slightly different things, wow. you, you don't get much change from $100 million. It just blows me away that every other camera company that we talk about, whether it's stills or cinema, mm. no one's done it. And you've basically probably got the smallest player, maybe Blackmagic is smaller, but you've got mm. one of the smallest players doing the most innovative stuff. How, did, how does that happen? I, again, I think it's just because they talk and they really, they really listen to their users. I yeah. mean, again, I could be I, I completely wrong, but I don't know if I think a more um, personable, not personal, personable. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, social media group. I, I, again, I've I've been on there for a bit, and it's been it's been a pleasure, and I've definitely learned a lot, and questions have been answered, and yeah, I I, I think definitely Red definitely listens in, definitely. Well, they, 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 not only do they listen, but they've got some technology that no one else has. So that's that's very impressive. And yeah. I, I hope to one day be able to film with that camera just to see. Yeah, what... but you know we're letting you, by the way. So you are going to, oh. I don't know. I mean, I, I, wow. we brought the uh, the V-Raptor XL. So if you that wanted to get a hold of one of these, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, or, again, if you just wanted to use the crash cam without crashing it. Yeah, definitely. Then, <laughs> then you'll be able to have a, a go with the Komodo X. Um, we do have, the good thing is that, I mean, Blonde Robot does have it because we, we want to make sure everybody gets to see it, try it, test it out. Demo days, like the one that you came to, the yeah. uh, Torrential Technicolor. Uh, we had two for, for the first time. That was really actually quite generous of Red yeah. to, to bring another one for us. But we had two of the brand new, the V-Raptor AK VistaVision Xs. And we had people having hands-on experience. So there was DOPs, there was production companies. We also had just film students that yep. came in and enjoyed it. And then you definitely wanted to come on and get the hands-on on that. And that was that part That part was really cool. Yeah, so, no, yeah. it was amazing. Thank, and thanks for making me a part of that. Yeah. That's red and that's the new camera. Yeah. Now let's talk about Nikon. Ah, okay, so you want to talk about, that was the third little, yeah, yeah, think, bombshell? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. I mean, it's been a big week for anyone involved in Nikon or red. Far out, a lot going on, or a big month, big quarter, big quarter. Let's yeah. call it a big quarter. Here we go. It would seem, from everybody I've spoken to, very few people knew this was happening. You mentioned off camera that there was 
vibrations that something might happen, but you didn't you didn't think it'd be this, did you? Yeah, oh, I mean, listen, I was surprised in a sense. I think after it was told personally, a little bit of a, you know, I, I understood. My, my eyes widened a bit. Yeah, I can see. Not like, ugh. All oh, right. But, yeah. but as a business decision, it, it was fantastic. If it's any way, because again, this is early days, so we don't know specifics. I mean, hell, heck, I'm taking bets with friends, so wonder how much it went for. But yeah, well, we'll find out. Do I mean, have any idea? Like, I have no idea. It, it's, it's a private company, right? So, yeah, but it depends on evaluation. That's what I mean. We're, and we also have to kind of look at the past. I mean, Jim Jennard sold Oakley for like one point two billion to Luxottica. So, yeah. And again, Red has the new technology. They just released the new stuff before the acquisition finished. Great business. Great business pathway. I mean, I have an idea. I'll tell you about it later because I don't want to say it out here because... Respect. 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 Personally, I think it was a great idea. Again, if it, if it follows any way that a lot of businesses do acquisition, if it's a, if a, a company is buying a company, if they're acquiring one and they are happy with their roadmap and what they're doing, they will let them operate under that same flag, let them do their thing. They all of a sudden now get the support or everything else from the buying company. That's my idea, and that's my thought process, because if you look right now of what other camera manufacturers have done, as well as Nikon, is they've diversified in their portfolios of how they do business. Canon and Nikon have a lot of optics that they do outside of the camera world. They do a lot of medical, they do a lot of other surveillance, that sort of thing. Mm. Canon does even more. Printers. I, I mean, there's that. But then you think, okay, Nikon, they did Mark Roberts Motion Control, who does the Bolt robots that is used in virtual sets. Interesting. Now you have what we talked about earlier, the same relationship about cameras in outer space, continuing to, to really do some, some pushes in the technology that they're doing. Did Nikon see Red as an absolute gold mine to say these guys are just doing it so well? year upon year upon year. And within 15 years to change the whole film industry to where we are with a global shutter, 8K, VistaVision camera, that's kind of hard to not be a little bit excited about. So. I was, look, I'm, I'm very, I, I made a reaction video hours after I was told, okay. sitting in my hotel room up on Mount Hotham, because yeah. uh, I was told as I was driving up there for the long weekend. And it was just like, I can't wait to see the mix of the DNA. Yeah. Because interestingly, they 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 both push the envelope, but they're pushing it in, like you know these are the first shutterless shutterless stills cameras. They have no mechanical shutter. Mm. A Z8 and a Z9, no mechanical shutter. It's just the sensor. Mm. So it's about as close as you can get to a red, strangely, or mm. a digital video camera. But it's still a stills camera. Mm. So they too were doing their own like wow moments in the stills industry, mm. and. Um, and then obviously, red, I don't think, make any lenses at the moment. And Nikon are just hitting it out of the park at the moment, lenses. Yeah. I, I smile only because I think some of your red users will know those red primes and zooms they had back in the day. But it, they were OEM today. Well, they used, to, they used to make them, yeah, but they yeah, don't make yeah. them now, do they? Yeah, yeah, correct. And the more and more I talk about it, the more and more I hear that Nikon glass has been used for decades. Just old Nikon glass, often rehoused. You know, they'll change the mount. Absolutely. But the glass has been loved in the industry. So there's so many kind of crossovers and yeah, synergies. Absolutely. I mean, here locally, uh, there's, a, there's a big cinema rental house, uh, Vision House, and they have uh, the Vegas. They're fantastic. T1.5. They have Nikon glass in it. Oh, right. Under that casing, there's a... That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. And also from everything else I've read, it sounds like for now that, that Nikon do want to let red continue to be red. Yeah, <laughs> that Nikon are going to continue to let them be who they are and do what they do. Mm. And to me, that's critical because red are actually, they're an incumbent in the industry. And you wouldn't want to just Absolutely. change all the people, change all the names and someone else turns up and it's like, I'm supporting this new cinema camera hmm. when really we know when we love red let's you know do it that way absolutely and then you can make you know i think we'll end up seeing z mount so using this mount red cameras and then they people can start to use a z glass 
and, as they choose to. Like, mm. and, that, and, and, you know, I don't think they'll get rid of all the mounts that currently exist. Again, I don't think that's a, personally, I don't think that's a great idea. Again, for me, it's all speculation. I see, personally, on the horizon, and it's going to be a positive thing. I mean, I'm just going to hope for it. I've, I've still, I mean, I still have my F4 Nikon. It was the first camera I owned when I went to college back, uh, way back in the day at Brooks. Uh, and then I, I mean, I still own my Raptors. So it's, yeah. Mate, you've got a foot in each cam. I, I really hope so, yeah. Personally, I feel that it's, I, I still find it funny. Again, the speculation that I hear and read all over uh, online to me is hilarious. Are you talking about the kind of the, neg the negativity? Well, not the negative. It's just, I, I just think it, it's so funny. It, it, you could definitely tell, I guess, uh, it's silly to say. I want to say like true users of a camera. I mean, people find it again. I think what I, I said earlier, I could have said it in two different ways. It's either a tool that you use to create your your image or it's 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 a paintbrush you know use it as just a tool that tool yeah to be able to make your idea come to life and what a company did to to sell to another one i i don't care as long as i get later in the future if it's if it's going to be ticking those boxes that i need and it's going to be helping me make better imaging then i'm happy with it and thus far They've done a pretty damn good job. So I can only hope it'll get better. Amazing. Quentin, thank you. Matt, You've been amazing. You're welcome. I Thanks, look forward man. to playing with that little beast there. Show the audience. It was the big one though, right? You were, you, were doing, you were doing this one? I think you're, you know, maybe both over time. Who knows? That would be nice. Yeah, there you go. All That'd right. Nice. Thank you, sir. Anytime. It's been amazing. Until next time. Cheers. Thanks, boss. All right. Thank you. Are we good? We are good.